The new Vault audio interfaces provide access to the Universal Audio Legacy at a price point accessible to even the most humble of budgets. Designed to compete with the likes of the Focusrite Scarlet, the SSL2, Audient ID14, Prestona Studio and Motu M series, Vault brings the rich vintage sound of the classic LA610 tube preamp and an analog 1176 inspired compressor to your desktop. Note, these are not digital emulations, these are real analog circuits. Vault is Mac, PC and iOS compatible for mobile recording to your phone or iPad and is supplied with a door, Ableton Light Live, Melodyne, Marshall Amplifier plugins, Ampeg bass amp plugins, virtual band plugins from UJAM, instrument samples galore from Spitfire Audio and a whole host of effects plugins. Before we find out how it sounds and performs, I want to know what interfaces you're currently using. Let me know in the comments below. Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com, here to help you make the most out of your home studios. Vault interfaces are Universal Audio's first venture into non-DSP audio interfaces. They come with clean, studio-grade preamps, high-quality converters, and class-leading headphone amplifiers. <laughs> Vault is available in five different models, the Vault 1 and 2, the 176, 276 and 476, the number representing the number of inputs. The 276 is also available in a recording bundle, complete with a condenser microphone and set of headphones. To purchase a Vault interface or any other home studio equipment, I've put links in the description below for your convenience to the best deals online. Universal Audio have kindly sent me the Vault 2 and the 276 that I'm recording this audio through for this review. This is not a paid or endorsed video, these are my own user-based opinions. Both are desktop designed 2-in and 2-out USB bus-powered audio interfaces with phantom power, mono and stereo direct monitoring, MIDI in and out connectors, and vintage mic preamp mode. They are housed in robust metal frames with the 276 hosting smart wooden sides combined with a sleek pale grey finish. The interface the faces have a good weight to them, assuring me they are well built and designed to last. The volume and gain pots are plastic but feel firm and twist smoothly. None of the pots are stepped, which is preferable for precise gain adjustment. The phantom power button features a 5 second soft start where the interface mutes the outputs while the voltage loads up to your microphone. This avoids any pops coming out of your speakers. The Vault 2 hosts a digital LED input level meter which displays signal, then yellow for near clipping and red for clipping. The 276 provides four LEDs providing more precise level indication. The headphone amplifier sounds good and performs well compared to other interfaces in this price range. The signal is clean all the way up to maximum gain and the amp provides plenty of headroom for low impedance headphones. The amp is powerful enough to drive my high impedance Sennheiser HD 600s comfortably to a good volume but this did require maximum output. The direct monitoring is adequate thanks to the strong headphone output level but it lacks the ability to balance your door input and your channel inputs in your headphones on the device. The Evo 4x Audient, for example, boasts this feature, but on the Vault, I've had to simply lower the volume of my master output in Logic to get a good input level in my headphones. This is not a deal breaker, but it's not ideal. The monitor output dial is not linear. The volume increases sharply over the first few degrees of rotation, extending to ballistically loud volumes, causing my KH120s to peak at about 80% volume. These are loud, but still sound smooth and uniform, suggesting good digital to audio conversion. The V276 features a real built-in analog FET compressor based on UA's iconic 1176 compressor, which adds instant clarity, grit, punch, and analog color to your audio. The compressor doesn't have transformers or discrete amp stages like the very expensive vintage units, but with a six to one ratio and three different ballistics modes based on the 1176 LN attack and release controls, it is all analog and capable of microsecond attack times in fast mode, just like the original 1176. There is approximately a 6 decibel gain boost from the compressor, so watch your input gains when engaging this circuit. Now my experience with the compressor is that it sounds like a 4 to 1 ratio until pushed harder, and then it seems to compress harder, similarly to that of an LA2A compressor that pushes back more the more you drive into it. I'm not sure if this was intentional, but it's an interesting result. Vintage mode is an additional 100% analog amp circuit that increases the second and third harmonics based on the subtle colour of the famous LA610 preamp. 
Again, the more I drive the vintage mode, the more saturation and coloration I seem to achieve. The combination of vintage mode and compression on the 276 model provides me with a lively recording tone, as you'll shortly hear. The XLR jack combination inputs and line inputs on both models of Volt have 55 decibels of gain available. This is the same as the Focusrite Scala and pretty standard at this price point. There is no digital gain boost available as found on the Origin ID14 Mark II, which provides an additional 10 decibels of gain, although I did find this to be quite noisy. I'd have liked the input gain to have been higher on the Volts with the use of my gain hungry SM7B dynamic microphone in mind. However, due to the clean preamps and the low floor noise at my minus 127 dBU. I found this to be enough gain. Now Julian Krauss has of course done the scientific measurements on his channel, but from a user perspective, the preamps definitely sound cleaner than most audio interfaces in this price range. Definitely more so than the Focusrite Scarlett, arguably more than the Audion ID14. I can't comment on Motu M2 before you ask, and quite frankly, I just think the SSL is overrated. Although it does boost an extra seven decibels of input gain. I'm recording the audio for this video through my SM7B just off screen now, with the gain set to full maximum, and I have utilized the compression circuit set to the fastest attack mode. This is how the preamp sounds at full gain. A link to the specifications for these devices, which is the same across all five models of interface, can be found in the description below. To demonstrate how these audio interfaces sound, I'm recording some vocals through two identical microphones, one into each preamp on the Volt 276, one with the clean signal, and on the other one, I'm gonna impose vintage mode for one comparison. Then we're gonna do another clean signal with the compressor to compare those, and then another clean signal with both vintage and compression applied, and then we're gonna to listen to these in the context of a full mix. For this comparison, I'm using the Jay-Z BB29 microphones. If you don't know Jay-Z mics, they are my favorite microphones in the world. This particular model is very clean and very clear, which is gonna give us a really good idea of the differences between a clean signal and vintage mode, which is gonna add some harmonics to the signal. As you can see, I've got the microphones as physically close together as possible. I'm standing about a foot away from the microphone, so my voice will give a good spread into each microphone to get an identical signal, as you'll be able to see in Logic. Will you take me by surprise? Will you take my breath away? Will you take me by the hand and lead me out into the night? In this world! In this world! Now when vintage mode came on, I'm sure some of you have thought, ooh, that sounds louder. But as you can see on screen, the waveforms are identical. The input gains were meticulously matched when I recorded this. What I think you're hearing though is the additional harmonic content in the high mid range, which is giving a higher perceived volume to the audio. And what this is gonna do is really help your vocals, or this would sound great on guitars as well, just sit a little bit higher in the mix without necessarily increasing the volume. Will you take me by surprise? Will you take my breath away? Will you take me by the hand and lead me out into the night? In this world! In this world! When the compression circuitry is added, you'd also be forgiven for thinking that sounds a bit louder. But as you can see from the video inlay of the Volt 276, the input gain has been adjusted accordingly to compensate for the six decibels or thereabouts of gain that the compression circuitry imposes. And you will see that again, the audio files are identical. The compression is rounding the audio nicely, helping it sit a little bit higher in the mix. Let's have a listen to vintage mode and compression apply against raw audio. Will you take me by surprise? Will you take my breath away? Will you take me by the hand and lead me out into the night? In this world! In this world! Will you take me by surprise? Will you take my breath away? Will you take me by the hand and lead me out into the night?
So what are your thoughts on how these features sound? Let me know in the comments below, guys. As I think you can hear, the compressor gently evens out the audio, minimizing the need for any post-production. This is useful for podcasts and also operates as a first inline compressor if you use the double compression technique that I do, especially on vocals. This technique is explained in this video and pretty much removes the need for any automation. All right, now let's be honest and talk about a few things that do bother me about this interface. An integral part of Universal Audio's Apollo Audio Interface infrastructure is their monitor, routing, mixing, and processing application called Console. For those of you who haven't experienced this yet, it is by far the most advanced and flexible monitoring software on the market. Now with that in mind, I was really hoping Universal Audio would release a light, non-DSP reliant version of this monitor application with Vault. One of the things I love about the Audient ID14 Mark II is the monitor mixing application and the flexibility that provides. I appreciate that console is a feature that separates Apollo interfaces from the Vault and all the other interfaces on the market and would probably have required an expensive redesign from the ground up. But I was really hoping for this level of functionality instead of just a simple direct monitoring function for which you can't balance the levels on the, on the interface itself anyway. For me, this would have solidified the Vault as the best in-class audio interface. Another problem of not hosting monitoring software is the lack of loopback functionality for podcasting or streaming if you're going to find that useful. I was also slightly confused why UA have included a third-party door being Ableton when their proprietary software Luna is literally the best sounding DAW on the market. Now I understand that Luna is designed with their proprietary DSP integration from the ground up and again redesigning this is probably another huge job I can't begin to comprehend but I'd have thought a light non-DSP based version of Luna could have operated as a good upgrade path to their DSP devices and they might have even saved some money on licensing costs to Ableton. The inclusion of five pin MIDI in and outs confuses me slightly as well. In a recent poll in the community tab on my channel I asked you guys, my awesome subscribers, what MIDI connectivity you use and 85% of you said you connect directly into your computer via USB and only 9% of you said you use the old school five pin MIDI cables. Now I understand UA want to keep this a vintage vibe interface, encouraging you to use your vintage gear which is great. Great. But if so few people are actually using 5-pin MIDI, why include this? Perhaps this expense could have been better put somewhere else, possibly towards more up-to-date converter chips or taken off the price of the device. Personally, I'd have preferred an ADA input expansion port instead. Being a drummer, of course I want more channels. But I also see how UA are reserving this expandability potential for their flagship Apollo devices. Vault 2 makes for a strong entry-level audio interface. The sound quality is up there with the best in its class and the additional software makes it a very appealing all-round package. And yes, I would choose this interface over the Focusrite Scarlet. The V276 offers unique features which I think justify the price and this definitely sits high up on my recommended interface list. I'd say the closest competition is the Audient ID14 Mark II and perhaps the SSL2 but I would definitely be choosing between the Audient and the Vault. A list of my recommended home studio products can be found on my website via the link in the description below. I've been Ed Thorne, thanks for watching, be kind to one another and I'll see you on the next one.